Moondrop is a newer player in the over-ear headphone world, so how do they do? Let's find out. This is the Moondrop Venus, an over-ear 100mm sub-nanometer planar. Not something you see every day. In some ways, it's actually a really good headphone, and in some ways, they could stand to improve. Let's get into it, starting with build and comfort. This is a $519, 615-gram headphone. Now, what that means is this, well, it's heavier than those LCDs people talk about doing neck crunches with. And while reasonably well distributed, the pads are large, the suspension strap auto adjusts pretty well, the weight, glasses or not, does feel unnecessary. I can wear this for a little while, but just a little while. This will vary from person to person. There are people I know who have had no problems with the weight of the Venus, but I am not one of those people. The holes drilled in the headband certainly help, and overall this feels like a pretty solid headphone. I mean, everywhere you look on it, it's metal, metal, and more metal. And in some areas, that probably does save on weight. In others, I'm sure it unnecessarily adds to it. The bright side is, it looks like the vast majority of this headphone would be serviceable if you needed to take things apart. Things are not glued together. In fact, the cups themselves come off pretty easily. Something interesting, and what some people may like more about this headphone, is that the interior diameter of the pads is actually really large. There is a lot of usable space. If you have taller or wider ears than the average person, well, this might be something you've been looking for. Kind of reminds me of the more spacious Hyphman cups on the Edition XS, the Ananda, or the Aria. The design for the swivel on the cups is actually pretty innovative. It's just built straight into the metal here on the band with a little notch. All in all, it's a good design, though there are some things I'm not too much of a fan of, like the 3.5mm entry on the bottom of the headphone. I don't dislike 3.5, in fact, I quite like it, but with the positioning of where they are and the cables then sticking out the bottom, it does have a tendency to rub on my shoulders and generate microphonics in the cable while I'm listening. So if I start rotating my head left or right, or if I slightly move, I hear not really ideal, but again, their first real entry into the large over-ear planar space. All things considered, build is solid. Aside from the weight and a few other minor things, there's not too much to complain about. So with that said, let's move on to subjective sound. Then we'll talk about objective sound and frequency response after that. I'm gonna make a few comparisons in this section, being $519 in that ballpark. Well, there's other things for it to compete with, things like the Edition XS or the less expensive Hyphman Sundara that's very well established. So how does this line up? Well, at times I would describe this as being slightly less shouty, which is nice, especially compared to some other planars in the market, things like your Aeons and whatnot. The strongest point for me on this was actually its timbre. Uh, the timbre, well, you compare it to things like the Hyphmans, which have a bit of a metallic leaning at times. Not all the time, but at times. And this, well, it kind of fixes that. Vocals, instruments, spaces, they all sound pretty natural. In fact, I was last night going back and A-being between this and the final D8000 Pro, which the D8000 Pro, that is a very expensive headphone. This sounds a bit more natural with its timbre, depending on the genre you're listening to. Of course, with other factors, the D8000 is in a league of its own, uh, but just an interesting point of comparison. Timbre on this is pretty solid. It's not going to be out something like an HD600 on timbre, but it is better timbre than I ever got out of the Hyphman Edition XS. The soundstage is pretty good too. It's not incredible, uh, but it's also not narrow. It's just kind of a middle ground. Things have space to them, but they're not expansive or massive. It's just good stage. I would say this is less sound stage than you would expect from something like the Edition XS, and another shortfall of it is kind of the imaging. It doesn't really image that incredibly. Things are very left-right separated, but center image is kind of blurred. There's not much happening there. I wouldn't really recommend this for someone who wants to use it for, say, uh, gaming or something where imaging is needed to be laser accurate. Unless the kind of gaming you're playing is more reliant on immersion than a competitive image. 
I'd also describe this as being a slightly less aggressive sound than something like Sundara, which is interesting because this actually does have more treble, especially more air, but it just comes off as a little bit calmer. It's still a headphone that I would describe as more analytical than some of your Odysseys and things of that nature, but it's also not hyper aggressive. It's just detailed with good timbre. That stage kind of pulls things back a hair so they don't feel like they bite you, but it also doesn't feel like it's lacking in any particular frequency range. Detail-wise, I would say this is comparable to things like the Sundara or the Edition XS, which I already believe are pretty close in terms of overall detail, which is a compliment because Sundara is a very, very detailed headphone as is Edition XS, especially for their price. I do feel like most of that detail is either in the mid-range or in sort of the upper treble, whereas I feel like the upper mid-range lower treble is relatively average in terms of detail. So I would say like your upper vocal ranges are good. They're present, they're clear, um, but the detail there is not what's exceptional. It's really the things both above and below that that stand out on this headphone. Bass is relaxed. It's not rolled off, but it is a bit more relaxed compared to parts of the mid-range. It's well extended. And if I had to describe it short and sweet, I would say the bass is round and deep. It can be very enveloping and it's enjoyable but it's also not for someone who might be a bass head seeking an emphasized low frequency experience. The mid-range really does stand out. It's not the same kind of mid-range as you're gonna get on an HD 600, but then again, nothing really is the mid-range you get on an HD 600, but it does stand out for sure as a plain R in this price range. But the treble is probably what people are gonna notice the most on this because it is not sibilant, but it is definitely airy. Not like the six kilohertz you get on the HG 800S, but when you think about the HG 800S and the rest of its airy factors, the things that make it sort of have a spacious quality to it, and a bit more, I'd say, sizzle up on top, you get that with the Moondrop Venus. Again, it doesn't seem to be sibilant to me, but it depends on what you're listening to. There are tracks that would take this to territory that I would prefer other headphones for. But all things considered, I do actually like the treble on this. It's not bad. Overall, it's got a good tonal balance, a good balance of all its subjective qualities, and I think it's time we talk about objective sound. Now, I don't know if you've seen, we put out a video recently. If you haven't seen it, it'll be linked in the video description talking about how we're gonna be moving away from the Harman target and portraying measurements differently in the future. And this means we need a new headphone reference target. But wait, what about Maharman? Where are Maharman's at? For now, we're gonna keep showing them the way you guys are familiar with, but just know those changes are coming and that video is worth checking out if you haven't seen it already. As you can see, bass is well extended, but like I said, a little bit subdued in the deep parts of the sub bass. It doesn't roll off, which is nice. In fact, it holds pretty strong and linear. Got a little bit of a bump mid range, somewhere in the 400 Hertz region. And actually, thankfully, in my opinion anyway, uh, we have just a little bit of a recess in the 800 to one kilohertz region. Now that's only a few decibels, but I think that actually is helping this headphone out a lot. There's a number of headphones that have a bump around 1K and they can tend to lean harsh with certain music. I think that is really saving this headphone and if it did have a bump there or if it was just straight up linear there, well, it wouldn't quite be the same. We see pretty solid linearity throughout ear gain and then around five kilohertz is where things start to go up and down a little bit. The peaks here don't really sound that aggressive, which is surprising given the nature of how much they're moving up and down, though part of this is also a couple of resonance, I'm sure, and we're seeing a dip right around nine and a half K. That does happen on a lot of headphones with these measurement rigs. All things considered, aside from the upper treble, well, it's relatively target adherent and pretty close to what I would describe as neutral. So let's move on to amp pairing and then wrap this thing up. Amplification, it's pretty simple. This is not a super hard to drive headphone. I have the old NFB 11.28 on my table here, and it powers it just fine at under half volume on low gain. If you have something like an Atom or, well, anything with similar power or more power than that, I think that's more than enough to drive this headphone with ease. Though I do think the non-linearity of the NFB kind of favors this headphone and gives it a bit more flavor. 
I do think this would also be a good pairing for someone who has, say, like an A90. That's got plenty of power, but it's very clean. With both of those things together, you're going to get a very no-nonsense, very detailed hi-fi experience. But again, those of you who have something like an Atom are going to get by just fine. As far as tubes are concerned, I can't really recommend this with tubes, but it depends on the amp. If you have an amp that is output transformer coupled or is using some sort of output transformer to mitigate the impedance difference, sure. In fact, the amps and sound ones are a pretty solid pairing, but if you're doing anything OTL, a dark voice, a TA26, I don't think the results were quite as good. Those output transformer-less amplifiers kind of struggled with the bass on this headphone. So conclusion, Moondrop Venus, should you buy it? Well, that's up to you but I think it's actually a pretty solid entry for Moondrop into this space. Again, the main concerns for me are weight above everything else, and if it weighed considerably less, it would be a no-brainer for me. I think that the people that are going to be picking this headphone are going to be choosing between it, the Sundara, and the Edition XS primarily, and I think that it's not a bad choice. Just depends on what you're after. So that is going to wrap up this video, guys. If you liked it, please leave a like down below, a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at the forums or Discord, both at the link in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till the next one, guys. Peace.